Hi everyone, in this video we'll take a closer look at the process of photosynthesis. To start, let's look at two different ways we can summarize this important process for life on our planet. Uh, so we want to take a look first at the chemical equation which describes photosynthesis. So the chemical equation tells us that carbon dioxide molecules will react with water molecules in the presence of light to produce this molecule, C6H12O6, that's glucose, it's a sugar, plus oxygen. Uh, you can see I've added in red the coefficients which are required to balance this chemical equation. Now a word equation uh, to summarize this process would be that carbon dioxide, that's CO2, is reacting with water, H2O, in the presence of energy, and the energy is in the form of light, to produce glucose, that is the sugar that we see right here, plus oxygen. Let's take a closer look at some of these molecules and their importance in the process of photosynthesis. First, glucose. This is a carbohydrate. It's a sugar. It's a molecule that has six carbon atoms. Uh, this is an energy storage molecule. Glucose in our bodies is an important molecule because this is a molecule which our cells can easily break down to release energy. Oxygen is produced by photosynthesis when water is split during the light reaction. And we know that this is important for life on our planet because so many life forms do depend on oxygen. Carbon dioxide is another important molecule, CO2. We can think of this as being somewhat like a food molecule for plants. And please remember that carbon dioxide is a waste product of organisms like us that will breathe out carbon dioxide. Finally, water, H2O. This molecule is split by the light reaction. That's what produces uh, the oxygen, but it's also doing something really important. We're going to take a look at that when we take a closer look at the light reaction. Let's take a look at some other important cell parts for photosynthesis. In addition to that, we'll talk about a couple more molecules too. First, the chloroplast. This is the organelle where photosynthesis is going to be taking place in plant cells. Chlorophyll is a molecule. This is a pigment which can absorb certain colors of light energy and uh, the colors that it will absorb are responsible for giving it a green color. It doesn't actually absorb green, it actually reflects green, it absorbs other colors. So that's why it looks green to us because it's uh, the green light bouncing off of the chlorophyll. So that's the color we're going to see. The thylakoid, uh, this is a structure inside of the chloroplast. This is the location for the light reactions where NADPH, this is an important molecule, is being formed plus this is where water is being split to form oxygen. Also, we're forming hydrogen ions, which play a really important role in uh, later cycles that we'll discuss in this video. Finally, the stroma. This is the solution that surrounds the granum. So this is the fluid on the inside of the chloroplasts. In this slide, we'll take a closer look at the structure of a chloroplast. So when we're thinking about a chloroplast, uh, some things we need to know. First, there are two membranes for the chloroplasts. There's an outer membrane right here, the outer edge. There's also an inner membrane. Now, the presence of two membranes might best be explained by a theory first proposed by Lynn Margulies called the endosymbiotic theory. Uh, now, on the inside of the chloroplast is the stroma. This is an aqueous fluid. So this is analogous in many ways to the cytoplasm of a cell. Uh, now, we also have these structures called granum, these stacks of gr dark green disks. Um, granums are stacks of thylakoids, so the thylakoid is an individual green oval that you see right here. Here's another thylakoid. Here's another thylakoid. Finally, the lumen is the space on the inside of the thylakoid. Photosynthesis is actually two separate processes. The light reactions, later we're going to be talking about the dark reactions, but first we'll focus on the light reactions. Just like the name sounds like it means, this, uh, these processes are dependent on light. They take place inside of the thylakoid membranes. Uh, this is when uh, chlorophyll is going to absorb light. It's going to produce a molecule called NADPH water is going to be split to form hydrogen ions and this is where that oxygen gas is going to be formed and uh, what we're going to look at in the next slide is a discussion uh, of chemiosmosis um, in this process there are going to be hydrogen ions that's h plus which are going to flow out of the thylakoids and as they're doing this it's going to drive the generation of atp molecules and atp molecules are incredibly important because they are energy storing molecules that cells can use to power their activities 
right then and there in the moment. So ATP you can think of as being instant energy. Let's take a closer look at these light reactions. So here we see in the image the membrane of a thylakoid. Now let's remember the, the lumen, this is the inside of the thylakoid. The stroma is outside of the thylakoid. So here we see that membrane. It is a phospholipid bilayer and there are protein molecules embedded within that membrane. Now here are the important things that you really need to know. As light is interacting with these protein molecules in the membrane, water molecules are going to be split. They're going to be broken apart. That's going to form the O2. That's the oxygen gas that plants are giving off into the atmosphere. The other thing that's forming are hydrogen ions. Now, think about it. The more light that's coming into this membrane space, you'll produce more and more and more of these hydrogen ions. So they're going to build up on the inside of the lumen. Now, this is going to create um, the need for these ions to move to the outside of the thylakoid uh, because of diffusion. Remember, diffusion says that molecules should move from an area of high concentration to where they are less concentrated. Now, they can't go right through the membrane. They actually need to pass through a channel protein in order to go from the inside of the lumen, uh, I'm sorry, the inside of the thylakoid in the lumen to the outside of the thylakoid. So they pass through a channel protein called ATP synthase. As they do this, they are going to drive the generation of ATP. So there are ADP molecules plus additional phosphates that are going to get joined together in order to form ATP. You can think of these hydrogen ions passing through here as being analogous to wind uh, causing a windmill to turn a wind turbine uh, to generate electric power. In this case, the hydrogen ions traveling through this channel protein are going to uh, convert energy into a form called ATP that the cell can use to power its activities. The other part of photosynthesis you need to know about is called the dark reaction. Uh, you're very often going to see this called the Calvin cycle when you look in textbooks or websites. Uh, this is a process which is occurring in the stroma. Remember, that's the fluid on the inside of a chloroplast. In this process, carbon dioxide is go, going through a series of different chemical reactions, each of them catalyzed by a different enzyme, which is going to generate molecules which contain three atoms of carbon. Now, these three carbon molecules can re-enter into the Calvin cycle. Uh, they can be used to create glucose, and they can also be used to create other organic compounds. This is really important because here we're taking uh, carbon from the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide, CO2. That's an inorganic form of carbon, and you're moving it inside of this living system, converting it into organic forms, uh, which are the basis for building all of the molecules that we find in cells. Here we'll take a closer look at the Calvin cycle. I'm not going to be discussing the details of each intermediate molecule. We'll leave that for an AP uh, level uh, presentation. Basically what you need to know is this. Uh, there is carbon dioxide entering into this process. Now it's not really a wheel turning on the inside of the um, chloroplasts. It's just a way of diagramming it. All of these different processes are occurring throughout the stroma inside of the chloroplast. Um, but we're generating these three carbon molecules. Now some of those may leave the Calvin cycle and they can be used to form glucose, they can be used to form other organic molecules. And um, as more and more carbon dioxide is brought into the chloroplast, this process can continue. Uh, please note that there's an important role for NADPH right here, also an important role for ATP right here. So if we didn't have those molecules being generated by the light reaction, we couldn't have the dark reaction taking place. So those two processes must go hand in hand. You have to have the light reaction to have the dark reaction occurring. I'd like to just briefly mention the process of chemosynthesis. It sounds like photosynthesis, but this is a process which does not depend on light. Uh, this is a process used by many organisms which live in environments where there's actually no light penetration, deep uh, under the the water in the ocean, for example. The light can only go down so far. There are actually entire ecosystems which never see the light of day, and they depend on the energy which is derived from chemosynthetic processes. 
This is when microorganisms are using molecules like carbon dioxide or methane, hydrogen gas, or hydrogen sulfide, H2S, as an energy source. Um, there are, as I said, entire ecosystems that are dependent on uh, these chemosynthetic processes, and they don't depend on light. They depend on chemicals, hence the name, chemosynthesis. This slide is a brief summary of an experiment my students will conduct in order to learn more about the process of photosynthesis. What they do is we're going to test the effect of changing carbon dioxide levels for plants. We use a plant called anacris. It's a water plant, and we can submerge that in water inside of a test tube, and then we can use a light, uh, shine that light on the plant, and the light reactions will take place. Now that uh, is going to produce oxygen gas. The oxygen will actually travel through transport tissues inside of the plant and will actually leave the plant at this tip right here so we can actually count the number of bubbles that the plant is producing and get a rough idea about how much of the light reaction is occurring. Uh, we use the variable of carbon dioxide levels to see uh, how we can change the rate of the light reaction dependent on how much carbon dioxide is available. So we'll use boiled water, which removes dissolved gases, so there would be a very low level of CO2 in water that was pre-boiled. You need to cool the water before you put the plants in it. You don't want to cook them. Uh, tap water contains a medium level of CO2. And finally, our third trial is when we add baking soda, uh, sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3, to water. And there, the baking soda is going to undergo a, a reaction which is going to release a lot of carbon dioxide into the water. Um, so this is a nice experiment to look at the effect of the dependence of photosynthesis on CO2 levels available for the plant. Okay, that's the end. Thank you for watching this brief introduction to the process of photosynthesis.